Hey, what's going on? YouTube Kenny here and interesting week in the market. So we're going to go over kind of the recap of what we saw in the markets this week and kind of set us up for the next week after this. So if you're new to this channel, Redcliffe Research is an independent research firm that deals a lot with uh, signal detection, looking for the anomalies in the noise. So big uh, data analytics background, co-founder of a data analytics firm. So that said, trying to bring that quant to you all, the retail investor. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, so um, this is an interesting chart from Fundstrat showing retail kind of jitters. Uh, basically, the thing that I want to highlight here is the, the fact that they were raising cash six out of the last seven weeks. So here you go, three weeks, uh, then the sell, but then more cash on the sidelines. So a bunch of cash on the sidelines. And, you know, from our kind of seat here, uh, according to the AAII, the bears have come to play, which generally typically means at a certain threshold, it should be kind of a risk on signal. Um, although that this is uh, the most bearish reading in 2021, remember this is uh, weekly. And so, you know, you're still sitting around 90% significance. We always like to see 95% needs a little bit more time, needs a little bit more flavor. Uh, that said, it does look like the uh, kind of risk on signal is kind of printing. Folks are kind of getting in and uh, you know, we'll go over kind of how we see and what we're doing on our side of the house here. But here is the actual AI sentiment indicator. And as you can see on 915, September 15th, even 22.4%. Uh, so actually would have loved to see this print like a 21% or below. That is significant. Pretty, pretty, pretty close. Um, okay. You know, and if you're saying that's close enough, let's have a bull run or let's continue this bull run, then sure, maybe so. Uh, but right now it looks like uh, the dry powder is getting deployed uh, a little bit more bullish this week, 29.9%. Let's look at the S&P. So this is the market indicator looking at trend exhaustion. So anytime you see 13s or 9s, those are intermediate and uh, extreme exhaustion, 13 being the most extreme. Uh, you know, the thing about the S&P is the, the mark works really good for the S&P. So as you can see, a 13 here goes down the 9 rolls over 13 a little bit of a rollover not really another nine rolls over this nine rolls over big time and that's because we were talking about how tight this consolidating range was and how far off it was so if you do draw a trend line this arbitrary trend line it was kind of topping over here uh so we do get a little bit of a correction here not much though five percent and we do kind of slip down uh to the 100 like we called but if you see here we're still on a very close um uh kind of early cycle when it comes to the the trend so if you're looking to buy definitely an interesting spot right here and obviously i don't know how to get this thing to to switch guys guys how do i okay <laughs> if you're new to this channel uh we do everything in one take and that's why indeed uh we were trying to figure out how that works uh so anyways not going to cut that but uh here's the um Simple moving averages, so gray is 50. Here's the 50. Uh, this is the 100 right here, and this is the 200, right? And, you know, going back uh, in time and thinking through this uh, and thinking through how kind of extended we were uh, on this move, you know, we were getting these 3%, like 4% correction, 3.5% 4 correction, 3% correction, and then now we were definitely looking for this bigger correction. This slips over here down to about 5%, uh, but, you know, would have loved to seen it hit the 200 and bounce. I think that would have been way healthier and definitely a more kind of aggressive uh, buy signal for folks who are dip buying. So uh, the thing that I'd say is now you are back into volatility land, which means um, just kind of like dip buying is going to work more. Uh, trend uh, kind of uh, trend and kind of momentum plays probably will start working a little bit less. Um, but, you know, kind of back test your own theories. We're just here to kind of uh, – think about things with you, but that's kind of how we're seeing it right now. Uh, there is one thing that I do want to talk about that I'll show you in a second here coming up. Uh, okay, so Ford Ford is early in the count as well, so following really nicely. Um, extended, extended bear run here, though, uh, for sure. As you can see, uh, if, we, if we drew a regression line from this top channel, uh, the mean reversion would be somewhere over here, right? And it looks like it's breaking out. So there's either signal to get uh, uh, to start <laughs> your uh your short or or this should be the trend but again i think uh you know the trend movements um these long extended trends here like for instance this downtrend and these uptrends these momentum plays probably are not going to be as uh 
as good for swing traders as as dip buying will be. And that's just kind of uh, the data we're looking at. Uh, let's just say that the, uh, you know, with volatility coming back, uh, I, we do think that, you know, going long volatility is probably the right answer here. So, uh, you know, a couple of ways to do that, obviously. But, you know, if you're not doing options and you're playing equity, then this is probably the time to start thinking about how you set up your dip buying strategy. OAH, same thing. Everybody's looking at the same thing. Uh, the interesting thing here is 173 uh, is kind of like the key support that we're looking at. The mark's printing it as well. Um, we're looking at about 170. Uh, but that said, you know, off this 13, big, massive move to the downside. Now we're kind of in a consolidating range. So if we're honest right now, we're topping at 190 right now. And this could be definitely a uh, kind of horizontal channel. And if you're kind of following us, you know, we do think that these natural horizontal channels are the most easiest to play for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you know, if the, you're looking at the psychology of buyers as sentiment, if you will, it's essentially telling you, you know, what range or what price uh uh, somebody's willing to buy and sell for. So like the longer it stays in that range, the more people are used to buying or selling at that price point. So once it either uh, kind of punches out or punches down, you kind of know exactly what's going on. And, you know, as it punches down or up or down, it's essentially just, you know, if you think about like a stock room floor, uh, when we had to buy it with paper or whatever like that. I don't remember those days, but, you know, you get my point. Uh, but, you know, if folks are yelling at each other, if they're yelling real loud and, uh, and, and, and they're like, hey, buy, 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 sell, 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 you'll start to see this kind of thing, right? And that'll break that channel. But generally in this channel through the days, uh, it's kind of the same kind of uh, recycling sentiment. Um, so the thing I want to talk about today is a thing called like the igniting wick. Um, so a lot of people talk about this, but they have an arbitrary way that they use it. Uh, what I would say is just go to Finviz and pull out volatility. So the, on the left side is weekly volatility, the higher number, and then the monthly volatility is on the right side. I just go ahead and scrap the, uh, the, the monthly volatility, go for the higher number, the weekly volatility. And if you see a daily move, so this is the daily chart. And as you can see here, this day, American Airlines moved 8.78. Um, but, you know, when there's momentum on these momentum trades, what you'll see is this, right? You'll see a, a wick and then another wick and it'll just kind of ride the momentum to the upside, right? Like that's six, seven, eight days in a row. But, you know, I think the market that we're in, this is why I think dip buying is kind of probably the better play here. And again, test this yourself. This is just how I'm thinking through it, what we're thinking about. But, you know, we get this uh, igniting wick. We got short right here and got out the very next day which is fine, but this is essentially, uh, again, what I'm saying is dip buying. So got out this next day, flip long, and look at this. You know, we got another, you know, about 15% move to the upside. So igniting wick, sentiment coming in, um, people kind of unsure, bag holders selling, and then the, the next wave of people saying, oh, okay, I'll buy again. Uh, and so, you know, this is kind of what we're seeing. So what, you know, what constitutes an igniting wick? Well, for us, again, the volatility, the monthly volatility, uh, and you can just pull that up on Finviz. It's on like the bottom right hand corner of the kind of sheet. And so Tesla, um, what am I trying to show you with Tesla? So Tesla, two things. Obviously, we have this kind of upward bound uh, resistance. Um, that we've seen a couple times. Um, and we did call for like the move down here. Uh, and it has moved upwards of 15.71% since we called the move and became constructive on Tesla. Uh, and right now, again, it's printing an igniting wick right here. Um, and that's because, you know, the, uh, the wick is obviously uh, exceeds the volatility. So the volatility right here, 2.52%. Uh, Again, take that out. Uh, it moved 4.04% in one day, and this was Friday. So what am I saying? Two things. One, it's it's hitting this natural resistance point anyways and literally stopped there. So what could it do? It obviously could retrace now. Uh, and this is only because of the volatility and the kind of the volatility settings in the stock market, if you will, right now. Somebody put them on extreme, right? So the, the point is like that kind of sell-off might happen. And I'm still constructive on Tesla, but I just think it's, it's going to be that igniting wick, kind of a pullback and pull. That's just the trend we've been seeing in the stock market, kind of the uh, the recalcitrant bulls versus like the, uh, the just the, uh, the not so sure uh, bears as well. So, you know, with that kind of fight 
taking place or, or, or playing out. I just think that this is kind of the natural progression, uh, if you will. Uh, Neo, we called it exactly to the T. So this is not me doing this afterwards. This is this is um, about seven, eight days ago. And not only that, like getting the trend exactly right. Uh, that's some serious palm reading, guys. Like it's literally following uh, the exact line that I put down. So what are we looking for? Uh, looking for about 2568 where we load the boat. So obviously, you know, this is the mean reversion here uh, off the big channel right here. We're at the mean reversion now and just slipped underneath it. Since we've slipped underneath it, that's kind of a signal that it can uh, clue down all the way down to here. And so this this is where the regression channel could definitely meet uh, 2550. And so if we hit 2550, 2568, 26 even, definitely would load up more Neo. We actually bought a little bit more anyways because, you know, long-term play, just putting it in our no-look uh, investment portfolio. Excuse me. So this is Upwork. And so uh, we took the trade on Upwork right here, and we've done really well. I think we're up over uh, 50 or 60 percent at one point. Maybe uh, sold at about 40 percent because we were sold on these two red days. Um, could this be a igniting wick? Excuse me. Yes, it could be. But the the thing is, um, you know, we've got our wins, and it's kind of bouncing around here on the uh, kind of simple moving averages. It could definitely take a take a ride back down to the simple moving averages and still be healthy. So right now we sculpt out of it right now, uh, taking a bit of profits. And so if it gets here and it holds, we'll take the trade back. We'll get back in the trade. And if it kind of falls back down to 39.22, fine with that, completely fine with that. Uh, definitely took our profits and ran. Uh, only took us about, uh, I don't know, two, two weeks, three weeks maybe. Workhorse. Uh, again, doing exactly what we thought it would on the upper upper end of the reversion though right so still trying to stay up in this upper channel right here still trying to be bullish but uh just can't do it the one thing that i would say is we're gonna be very careful here because it has hit a very critical floor for us seven dollars and uh, 34 cents and and as such uh just want to make sure that we're watching it uh because essentially you could easily flip long here look at this here uh and probably okay for a little bit. Uh, we're pretty short biased for the long haul. Uh, we do see it getting down to like three bucks. Uh, so we're holding here. We have long term puts. Uh, but the point is, you know, right now um, we could definitely kind of peel and, and wait for later. Uh, but, you know, we're in a good spot. So we're just kind of holding here. Palantir. Oh, gosh. Uh, got this one really wrong. Um, so the reason we thought it might be going short or flipping short here is. A couple reasons, but we should have went through and looked at the kind of the horizontal support. Uh, this upper bound is kind of like a key spot, and we hadn't reached it yet. So we were right here thinking about going back down to 22. It did open up a put position, got blown out of that. Uh, <laughs> Richard, number one, got blown out pretty hard, too. I got out the first day, but uh, did have a little bit of sell-off, and he did, was able to get out uh, with some uh, with some theta left. Here's the thing. Um, again, the first, the first kind of move here is 50 days long. This second move was 50 days long, which is why we were flipping short. Should have waited for this kind of 29-slash-30-ish uh, price range, though, before we flip short, so it kind of got that wrong. At the upper end of the regression channel right now, both the upper end of the channel and the upper end of this band, uh, which is like critical resistance that we've seen uh, uh, several times before, and I'm just kind of highlighting it here. Uh, but we're at about 66 days of this this second run now, and this is 50 days. So uh, to us, this is kind of exhausted, um, and we're probably going to flip short again. We're going to try one more time. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's really no need to. Um, but the other thing is, you know, in terms of um, – you know, when it comes to looking at the chart, this is Palantir again, but look at this blue line that's going across again. Uh, this is the line that it's at. Just going to show you, sometimes if you simplify the chart and take away all the noise, uh, you can kind of see, obviously, where it's hitting. Um, you know, you could call these kind of close or whatever, but uh, it's hit this price target a bunch of times. So if you're asking me what the actual Palantir chart actually is, and we're doing our horizontal channels, it's 1750 to about 37.50, right? Uh, and you can play with that, but like again, this is the mean reversion line. You're literally at dead center. So there's two things that can definitely happen here. Bull run coming up, uh, make a move to 40, uh, or it can reject very hard here. 
The thing that I'd say is though, this is probably where it should be. And the reason why is like, as you can see here, these are these big kind of volatile gaps trying to figure out what it looks like. But as you can see here, you know, when you see something print like this, uh, people kind of generally concede to a certain price. And I really th thought it was like about 25, which is why we were putting 22 on the, on the floor. But um, again, this is just palm reading. Anybody can do this, but excuse me. <coughs> but I'm just suggesting that you kind of think through this. So uh, for me, not really touching this right now, uh, but if you see a big kind of whipsaw here, uh, it could be an interesting trade. No really reason to kind of short it. Uh, there are other kind of piece here too is if you look at Palantir here uh, this is uh, number of mentions in Wall Street bets so go EV 397 right now if you're wondering so S&P actually a real popular stock to trade and Tesla uh, getting that sentiment uh, too um, so you know we kind of this is kind of just a simple way to look at it just number of mentions uh, in Wall Street bets but what you can do is you can kind of extract this and kind of throw it into kind of uh, another another kind of weighted average that you use for sentiment and that's kind of what we do uh, but this is definitely an input that we use so um, the reason why i'm bringing this up is because palantir is here with 39 uh, definitely decreased it was uh, on that previous run up here um, by co ev 397 mentions but obviously this is the the stock that you kind of want to look at if you're a trader uh, go ev and so you know palantir kind of reduced it, uh, when it comes to sentiment right now at least from wall street bets uh, this is a funny one. This is Jordan uh, telling us about Roblox. Uh, and the cool thing is it's not only is it $89.99 per, per, per one. So these are $100 gift cards, right? The crazy thing is uh, it's like limit three per customer. So, you know, here it is. <laughs> so I thought it was funny. Uh, signal, right? Nah, not really. But if you're looking at the Roblox chart, um, here's an interesting thing. Uh, I would say that this is the channel, right? And so if you're in the trade right now, uh, we might be at the upper bottom of the channel looking to maybe come back down. If we stay up here and do this, then we've, we've you know, cleared that channel uh, and we've kind of uh, absorbed all that supply and we will play around in this top channel here with 105 slash 83. That should be the secondary channel. If we do fall back down, um, you know, at around 80, definitely going to flip short, uh, not short, like this is a long-term investment portfolio, but like, you know, you could sell some covered calls or maybe take a put. Uh, thing is, you know, definitely could get back down to 65, which would be okay with me more time to load the bullet. So taking another tranche at 65 for damn sure if it gets down there and you could probably bet against it. Uh, I wouldn't, but it's another play that's uh, totally in the playbook if you would. And really that is it. So, hey, Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I know we've been kind of sporadic and sparse a little bit. That's because we had a little bit baby boy in the uh, in the Kenny family household. So, you know, taking care of him, taking care of mama. So, um, yeah, but we're back to probably regularly scheduled programming uh, about four videos a week. So we will um, see you tomorrow. Bye.